who is one actor slash actress that you can never stand watching, no matter what they are in, not an actor, but fellow Australians may understand. My mother cannot stand the 7 news weather lady and has to leave the room whenever she's on. I don't get it. In my household it's Trassy Grimshaw and Sophie Monk. My fiancé cannot stand the latter, and she's host of so many reality shows I'm guaranteed to hear a rant about it at least once a day. F. Salman Khan. Dumbus can't act. Killed 5 people under influence. Killed a endangered deer. Physically assaulted his GF. Crushed upcoming actor's career. Had ties with Mafia. Worst part is he walked away from all of this without any consequences. P.S. 1. As people have pointed out below he ran over 5 homeless people, and one was killed other 4 survived. This is about Salman Khan, actor, not be confused with Sal Khan from Khan Academy. Correction GFS actually, damn. This is some real batch, lots of others are I don't care for her speaking voice, but this guy, holy moly, he walked away, because in our country, being an actor means you're basically God. Every time I see Gwyneth Paltrow in a movie, I immediately think of her health and wellness scam. Goop will never not be funny to me. Part of me feels like it's a social experiment. The name alone was always just too on the nose. If I remember correctly, someone told her all the popular websites have OO in their names. So she just put OO between her initials. She also plays the same character in every role. A demure supporting significant other. Wealth and illness. More like... And Edic, F-ing a hole. I've never wanted to assault a celebrity, but him he needs to be beaten. Well, good news. John Lovitz beat the shot of him for getting Phil Hartman's wife back on coke, contributing to his death, then making a tasteless joke about it. Not quite. When Lovitz replaced Hartman on news radio, he blamed Dick for Hartman's death. Dick wasn't having it, so this created a very poor atmosphere until the producers stepped in and told them to settle it. Lovitz dug deep and found it within himself to stop blaming Dick, and apologized. Dick accepted. Years later Dick and a friend burst into a restaurant owned by Lovitz, and completely trashed out of their goods cause a commotion. Lovitz tries to defuse the situation, by cajoling Dick away from guests, and keeping him from bothering people. But things just got out of hand and Lovitz wound up having to kick them out. The next night at one of Lovitz's regular comedy shows, Dick shows up. Lovitz thinks he's here to apologize for the other night and meets him in the lobby after the show ends. Dick isn't. Dick informs Lovitz that he never actually forgave Lovitz for blaming Phil Hartman's death on him and that he's put the Phil Hartman hex on Lovitz. That's when Lovitz put Dick's head through a bar. Just the idea of Lovitz beating the shot of anybody is maybe the best comedy bit Andy Dick has ever been involved in. Yeah that whole thing was super repetition. I wish I could recall John's retort to Andy. I'm sure it could be found easily in search engine. I remember reading that and thinking. F dude. John Lovitz will always be a hero to me. I hope he's doing well. His Twitch streams before ban were just him non-stop begging for money. Then doing a cocktail of drugs. And passing out. Rock bottom. About 20 years ago my then wife. And I took a trip to New York City. We ended up getting tickets to see David Letterman, and Edick was one of the guests, and he got to interview slots, because one of the other guests cancelled, he was basically half the show, it was awful. Ellen DeGeneres is really annoying, how has she been so successful, I have never liked her, her interviews are really about her, not the guest her games are sadistic, I think she fell into the Jaylee no trap, likely no, she was actually a really good stand up comic back in the day, but once she got the regular talk show gig, she turned corporate, mediocre, and bland. Millions of dollars can have that effect on people. The top 4 comments are all James Corden. When I saw that I expected it to be one of those reddit threads that's just the same thing all the way down. P. Followed by Amy Schumer and Amber Heard. I hate to be mean. But after he's all that, a re, she needs to stick to being an influencer instead of an actress. I think the worst part in all of this, is that this will become the new normal. The new generation of actors will mostly be internet that went viral, and managed to keep their grip on prepubescent children. James Corden. What a dick. Steven Segel. Back in the late 90s, my best friend was running Burrow for the Six Flags Batman show. When Steven Segel showed up behind stage, with my friend's boss, he went to say hello to Segel and his bodyguard stepped in front of him, and told him step back, 
he's on a higher plane than you are. We still laugh about it to this day. Rob Skneeder tells a famous story of when Segel was hosting SNL Skneeder saw Segel coming out of his dressing room with tears in his eyes. So Rob asked him what was wrong and Segel said, I just read the best movie script that has ever been written. Skneeder says wow it must be that good. If it brought you to tears. Who wrote it? He says Segel looks in him dead in the eyes. And says I did. Loved that Colbert Report episode talking about some stupid speech he made to a bunch of law enforcement or something. Siegel. I have spent hundreds of thousands if not millions of hours on my firearms training. Colbert. Never mind the fact that a million hours is over 114 years. Who is apparently out of his goddamn mind. Bikes. What the f you take? Bikes. I was pretty much done with him. After he destroyed a family's home and killed their dog while cosplaying as an as sheriff's deputy. I can't stand James Corden. This is the fourth time I've seen him in this thread. They're the top four comments. Two. Guy sucks. James Corden. I watched Cinderella last night and read about it on my phone as I watched. One review referred to him as covered for movies in that he ruined them. One review I read said that he was somehow worse in this than he was in Cats. Did Corden have a big part in Cinderella? He's one of the worst things about that movie. He manages to make the scenes he's in all about him. I swear, the scenes at the ball, the most important scenes in the movie, have more of James Corden than Camilla Cabello. He's also one of the producers, so I have a theory that's why he was in the movie so much. I think this is Reddit's favorite least favorite actor slash personality. Agreed. Doesn't help there are so many stories out there. Or what a pompous say he is to a lot of people. Cats was already a bad movie. He did not help it any. He is so trash. I don't understand how he keeps getting cast. Especially when everyone I've ever met has the same reaction to his name being brought up. F that guy. F I'm Bella Thorne. Ugh. Shake It Up is just general Disney Channel fodder and I didn't mind her in that when I was in high school, and I've been lucky enough to not see any of her other acting ventures, but goddamn, she just has a skeezy vibe about her, I can't imagine any of her recent stuff is any good, it's quite interesting comparing the careers of the two leads of that show. Zendaya has gone on to be this award winning actor, appearing in a multitude of well received shows and movies, while Bella Thorne seems to have gone off the deep end. I like in an interview she said she was repeatedly sexually assaulted as a teen in Hollywood. She seemed to cope by making herself fun appealing, not bathing slash shaving. ECT. But I don't know if it stopped. I don't recall if she was able to process her trauma and get mental health help with a professional. Seems to be very close friend of a Bella Danger. Shake it music video aside, Bella Thorne also directed a porn starring a Bella called her him. HMM thank you for telling me, so I can go and avoid that. I saw one of her younger movies for the first time recently and said hey, she's pretty interesting. Has she been in anything else? And everyone in the room got sad. I feel like I said I wanted to go visit a historical temple in Nagasaki without knowing about the war. Gwyneth Paltrow. She used to be one of my favorite actresses. But the whole goop thing kind of ruined it. I will still watch and enjoy her movies like Shakespeare in Love. But she will no longer draw me to a movie that she did in the past. Emma is a beautiful film. And I hate that Harvey Weinstein terrorized her during production and no one deserves that. That said, no one deserves a smug wellness grifter bullsh. Except rich healthy people it probably won't hurt. But taking advantage of aspirational or desperate unwell people. So she gets richer off regular folks money. F no. Yeah, I can't look at her now without thinking about what a shameless charlatan she is. She was great in Contagion, in how she died in the first 5 minutes. There are some singers that have tried to become actresses and Mary A. Carey and Beyonce cannot act, period. Mary A. Carey's role in Glitter and Beyonce's role in Obsessed and Dream Girls was horrible, again. Both of these ladies are amazing singers, but acting point nope. You too easily forget the pinnacle of 2002 cinema, with Beyonce and Goldmember. <laughs> Lee Michelle. She had those diva vibes, and she is not even that big. I really only watched Glee for the late Naya Rivera and Diana Agron. The only movie I ever saw her in was that New Year's Eve movie, but I did see an episode or two of Glee back in the day, and every time she came on screen, and I was like that girl looks like a real B asterisk. In real life she is. She bullied a lot of her co-stars in Glee. I was in an episode of Glee. She's either totally method or a huge jerk eye roll. 
James Corden. Doing a quick scroll through these comments, I think most agree with you lol. His ammo hosted by you slash latter latter shalks is legendary, you don't wanna miss this. He's literally top 4 answers when sorting by best right now. I don't remember hating him in Gavin and Stassi. James Corden is the most worked with the robots to betray the humans and get put back into the Matrix as a famous actor person who has ever existed. Saw this post last month not mine, but thought it appropriate to share here. A similar question was on Reddit within the last month I think, and the top response was also James Corden. He is absolutely insufferable. I don't know exactly what it is about him, but just knowing he is in something is an absolute turn off for me wanting to see it. Anytime any sort of clip of him comes up anywhere I just instantly become annoyed. I truly do not understand people who like him. Obligatory James Corden Amma. That's your reason to hate him. He acts friendly and outgoing on TV, but in reality he's a massive a-hole who thinks that everybody else is beneath him. It's all an act. There's so many stories that involve him bullying the production staff and treating fans like garbage. I don't mind someone being unfunny, but when they are unfunny and an entitled a-hole it's not a good look. I like how you didn't capitalize his name. A sort of passive aggressive fu. Lowercase. Derogatory. James freaking Corden. I once had to coordinate a guest for a special in the field segment for his late night show. And Corden was so late and inconsiderate and rude that he made several people cry. He also personally lashed out at me for asking him to stop being so mean to people. Their legal team called after to try to confirm that we wouldn't sue. And they sent several insane gift baskets to try to make up for it. We didn't sue. We ate the cookies. And we all still hated him. Corden hates me on a personal level so it sparks incredible joy for me to see this much well earned hate towards him. You're a hero to us all. Thank you. People deserve to be challenged on this sh shoulder suit they wouldn't have been acting like that if they thought you'd lose. That recent prom movie on Netflix would have been cringe comedy gold. If not for that effing a-hole putting on a gay lisp so thick it was actually offensive. Not to mention him leaning so hard into stereotypes he made headlines. Seriously what dirt does he have on everyone in Hollywood that he is forced into these roles despite not fitting them one little bit. Not only was the gay lisp bad, his American accent was uncomfortably bad. He was slipping in and out of his relaxant so much that it was distracting. If you're not going to cast an actual gay man, at least cast an actual American man. Ruby Rose. A charisma vacuum that can't act. John Wick 2 was smart to give her no lines. Especially since it would have required her trying to sound Italian I assume. I was just thinking she's not that bad. Then I realized the only thing I've seen her in is a movie where she doesn't speak at all. Gawlamy. She does suck. The bad suit is perfect. It will be when it fits a woman. Cringe. Worst line ever. Okay. So point I hate watching Mark Wahlberg, but point I love every movie that pug-faced goon makes. Mark Wahlberg can only play Mark Wahlberg. I mean they don't even bother to give him a different haircut. It's like he just shows up on set in between running errands. I was watching Deep Water Horizon. And he starts out with a southern accent, and by about halfway through the film he can't even be bothered, and just starts speaking with his standard Boston accent lol. They go, yep, Mark, just show up to set in whatever you got on, and we'll work with it, and we're just gonna give you airlines as we go cuz her plain herself. IDKY I wrote that in a Boston accent. Discount Matt Damon. He comes off as such a rube in all of his roles. But his management team is really good at getting him into interesting movies. I very much dislike James Corden. I like how I've seen his name spelled at least three different ways in this thread. Lol. Gems Condom. Lena Dunham. To this day I can't figure out if Girls is a commentary on how shtight 20 somethings can be, or if she saw the characters as normal. Jared Leto always seems like he's trying too hard and his dead fish eyes creep me out. The contrast between him and Ledger is astounding. Leto would stay in character as Joker all throughout the Suicide Squad movie, even going so far as to send used condoms to his castmates. Edit. I'm told this is a debunked myth. Meanwhile, Heath Ledger would immediately break character when Evan Arlen yelled, cut during the Dark Knight. Reminds me of that exchange between Peter O'Toole, Lawrence Oliver and Dustin Hoffman, when Hoffman had to do a scene where his character was physically exhausted. He stayed up for 36 hours straight to get into it. Upon hearing this, O'Toole Oliver remarked to him 
Goodness, have you ever tried acting? It was Lawrence Olivier, his co-star in Marathon Man, who said that to Hoffman. A current male actor had a good point. You only see people do method when they are playing a-holes. Nobody ever seems to consider it when portraying an actual good person. There's something to be said for method acting though. James Gandolfini would stay up all night to be realistically tired for morning scenes in The Sopranos and put a rock in his shoe when Tony needed to be especially annoyed. And his portrayal of Tony Soprano is one of the best characters in TV history. Also many of Nick Cage's performances early in his career, when he was method are spectacular, when I was younger, around 10 to 12 years ago, I had a huge crush on Leto after hearing a few 30 seconds to Mars songs. Needless to say I rushed to the internet to find other fangirls to commiserate with. Instead I found several forum threads where teen girls were discussing his proclivity for having sex slash trying to have sex with very young teenagers, 12 to 16, who went to his gigs, some first and second hand accounts, others just rumors. Just to be clear I don't know if any of it was true, but I dropped my interest in him and his music pretty damn quick. I can't find any of those old forum posts today, but it seemed to be common knowledge in these groups. Maybe it was all made up, but I still get a very icky feeling when I see him on screen. Can't help but wonder if anything incriminating will come out on the guy someday. I know exactly what you are talking about. There were a lot of online forums and discussion groups about his violent sexual encounters from maybe 2004, 2010 ish haven't really rallied behind any of his work since. Jesse Eisenberg and Jared Leto. My favorite scene with Jared Leto is when he gets murdered by Patrick Bateman. Katie Holmes. It's painful watching her in a scene with a competent actor or actress, like someone from a high school drama class snuck onto the set of Citizen Kane. Katie Holmes is a bobblehead. Seriously, watch her. She cannot say a single line of dialogue without shaking her head from side to side. Jess Eisenberg plays Jess Eisenberg in every movie. Zombie Land and Now You See Me were great. Everything else I can do without. Editors several people have mentioned. Vivarium and American Ultra were also good. Maybe I like Eisenberg more than I thought. American Ultra for some reason. I love. Maybe it's the idea. IDK. But it's awesome in my opinion. That movie was literally the two people who play the same character in every OV. Except it was cool as F. Not true. Sometimes he plays Michael Cera. I like Seth Rogen, but I feel like he plays the same character in almost everything he does as well. That's because Seth Rogen is typecasted as himself. That was by design. He is a nice and funny guy who likes to smoke pot, and he gets casted to play that role, which winds up being totally natural to him. I also think the post removed something about Seth Rogen. Because these responses don't make sense. Lol. Jess Eisenberg's voice slash tone makes me want to punch him in every movie. Now you see me was great. But he still makes me mad. Did he just learn that from social network and Zuckerberg? Makes sense you'd want to punch Zuckerberg. There's a pretty long queue for it. He's forever typecasted to play himself. He's not a bad actor per se. But if you see him in a movie you already know what kind of character you're gonna get. Obligatory James Corden and Amy Schumer. F I hate those hacks. My wife will not watch any movie cruises in. I love Minority Report and War of the Worlds, but she won't watch them. Tell her to watch Edge of Tomorrow she gets to watch him get killed over and over and over again. I was just thinking that I haven't watched a good movie in a while. I feel the same. And I even think he's a good actor. Well I'll still see his movies on occasion. But can't really his general energy slash presence. Bill Cosby. Amber Heard point I just can't. Amber Heard. The domestic abuser. And professional bedstare. I thought you were joking with bedstare. Boy was I wrong. Cara Delevingne. Her in Suicide Squad point it's always makes me cringe the dance. Or whatever she doing towards the end. Absolutely agree. She instantly takes me out of anything I'm watching. She's just too model Y. As soon as she appears on screen, I feel like I'm watching a perfume commercial or something. It's just abundantly clear that she's a model playing an actress playing a character. Just put her in commercials, music videos, whatever. She's good at that stuff. Keep her out of movies. Same thing they did with Emily Ratajkowski, Brooklyn Decker, Kate Upton etc. I don't understand why people put her in movies. It's painfully obvious 
that she couldn't act her way out of a wet paper bag. Her family is incredibly wealthy and connected. The idea that Hollywood stars are self-made is almost always fraudulent. If one wants to be famous in Hollywood, it's the connections, not the talent, that makes one famous. It's the old cliche. It's not what you know, it's who you know. She's just a pair of eyebrows that control a body. A guy hate that Hollywood is forcing her onto us. I feel like they stopped. Ruby Rose, I'm sorry but I can't stand that woman acting abilities. Cringe compilation worthy. Amy Schumer. Joe Acking, literally I didn't think anyone else would think this. Thank you. Amy Schumer.